Hello I am Art Invader and welcome to my tutorial. Maybe you already know me. I am a digital artist from Berlin, Germany. I regularly post my art and short tutorials on my social media channels. Feel free to check them out. You can find the link in the caption. I want to turn my passion into a profession. Therefore it would be nice if you support me on Patreon. There you will find the project files to my YouTube tutorials. For a small financial surcharge, you also get access to my 3D models, which I use in my art. Thank you for your help. Today I will show you how to create this custom devil head in Blender. In the first part of the video, I will explain how to sculpt and animate the head. In the bonus part of the video, I will explain you how I edit my animations with Adobe After Effects. Let's get started Art Invaders. Clear the light in the cube with the X key. I provide you with a 3D head. You can find the download link in the caption. To import the head go to file in the top bar, then import in Wavefront OBJ. Now we scale the head smaller. For this we select the head, go to side and select scale for X, Y and Z 0.1. Now we press on the camera icon to select a suitable cutout. So that the head looks directly into the camera, we select it and enter 45 degrees for rotation Z. Dash then we select the camera layer again and go to output properties and enter a format of our choice, then we go to the object data properties and zoom in closer to the object with the value of focal length, with shift x and y we can center the section, dash now we transform the head. For this we select the head layer and switch to the sculpt mode. First, first we select the grab tool. At the top of the bar you can set the size of the tool. I choose 80. If you press x. You can work on the head symmetrically on both sides. I do the following steps with the grab tool. With the smooth tool you can remove unsightly corners from the head. With the inflate tool I minimally enlarge the lips and the cheekbones. If you are satisfied with the result, go to the edit mode. There we press with the right mouse button and choose subdivision, so that the whole head looks more detailed and smoother. Now we create the horns. For this we go back to the object mode and select add. Then mash and a cone object under verticals we select 250. Note. The position must not be changed, otherwise the deformers won't work properly later on. Under transform we select scale X and Y 0.1 and for Z 0.5. Then we go into the edit mode. There we also press with the right mouse button and select subdivision. In the menu panel below we select 10. After that we go back to the object mode and go to the modifier properties. Under add modifier we select simple deform. Then we select bend and only the y axis. Under angle you can choose the strength of the bend. I take 57 degrees. If you are satisfied with the result. You can place the horn on the head and duplicate it. Now we create the collar. For this we choose at the top of the bar under mesh, cylinder. Under verticals we take 163, for radius 0.67 and for depth 0.38. For cap file type we take nothing. Now we go to the modifier properties and select solidify. There we can set the thickness under thickness. I choose 0.18. Then we choose subdivision surface and select at levels via port and renderer 4. Now we can move the collar to the right position. Finally we create the spines. First duplicate one of the horns and remove the bend deformer. There you set all values for location and rotation to zero. Then you go to add, curve and circle. Scale the circle to the size of the tube and place it on it. Now you select the spikes and under modifier properties you select array. A. 
at count we choose 15 and at relative offset at x1.4. Under add modifier we add curve and place the circle under curve object. Under transform we select for location y 0.1, for rotation x minus 90 and for scale z 0.2. If errors occur, go to the circle spline and change the scale value. Finally, we insert two spheres with a radius of 0.4 as eyes. Then go to modifier properties and add a subdivision surface for both spheres. At levels view and render we enter 4. Now we come to the material. First we split the view in two. For this go to the side until A plus appears and drag the window to the side. Change now to the shadow editor. Then we change the viewport shading in the upper right corner, 4. Under material properties add the same material for each object. Set metallic to 1 and roughness to 0.1. Then switch to the world mode. Search for environment texture and insert a picture of your choice. I choose HDRI sky. Then I duplicate the environment texture and paste a picture with lightning in it. To connect the two environment textures we now search for mix RGB. There we connect both textures and set mix RGB to add and set the value of fact to 1. Then we search for hue slash saturation. Set hue to 0.4 and saturation to 2. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can find the whole project files there. You can find the link in the caption. Now we create the material for the eyes. Go to the material properties and create a new material. Then insert it for the second sphere as well. Select in the material under surface emission. Under Emission Strict we select 10. Now we come to the animation, to give the graphic a stronger dynamic we animate the environment texture with the lightnings. For this we search for mapping and geometry and connect them as follows. Under Scale I search for a cool color backdrop, I choose for Scale Z and set it to 0.1. Extend the animation to 5 seconds, 150 frames. Rotation Z we animate now. Go to the beginning of the animation and set a keyframe with the right mouse button. Then go to the end of the animation and enter 360 degrees for rotation Z and set another keyframe. Now we animate the collar. Select the spikes and go to Transform Location X. Put the slider at the beginning of the animation and right click on it and insert a keyframe. Move the slider to the end of the animation and enter 3.2 meters for location X. As you can see the animation is slower at the beginning and the end and gets faster in the middle. For this you have to go to the graph editor. There you select the animation curves and go to key, interpolation mode and select linear. Now we come to the render settings. Under camera we go to the render properties, for ambient occlusion I set distance to 0.5 and factor to 0.4. This value creates shadows within the animation. Afterwards I set a check mark at bloom. Threshold I set to 1, knee to 0.4, radius to 5 and intensity to 0.1. For color I choose blue. I also set a check mark at motion blur and remove the background under film. That's it, the animation is ready to render. Choose a suitable clip and press Ctrl plus F12. Now we come to the bonus part of the video, where I explain to you how I edit the animation with Adobe After Effects. Please note. I use basic effects in Adobe After Effects, there are no plugins. Some effects are in English in Adobe After Effects and some are in your native language. I don't know what's the reason is, but you can try to search for the effect in your languages, if you can't find the effect I use. 
By double-clicking in the Layers window you can paste the finished PNG sequence into Adobe After Effects. Then search for the effect Hue slash Saturation. There you select the value 20 under Master Saturation. Then duplicate the layer and search for the effect Grayscale 4. Set the blending mode to Multiply. Press the T key and set the opacity to 25%. Then select the bottom layer and look for the effect Edge Glow. There we set Edge Detect to 120. Then we search for the effect Diffuse Glow. There we set Threshold to 79. Finally we search for the effect Drop Shadow and set Opacity to 15%. To make the shadow lie evenly behind the animation we set Distance to 0. Also we increase the range with Softness 50. Now we add a cloud background. To make the background match the color of the animation we search for the effect Hue slash Saturation. At Master Hue we turn the wheel to minus 30 degrees. At Saturation we choose 30 and at Master Lightness we darken it a bit by minus 20. To make the background less noticeable we look for the effect Gaussian Blur and set Blurriness to 8. We also look for the effect Noise. There we set amount of noise to 5%. Now I add some text elements, which I created before with Adobe Photoshop. After that we press Command plus A in the flat window and then we click with the right mouse button and choose Pre-Compose. We search for the effects Auto Color, Auto Contrast and Auto Levels. For auto color and auto level we set the mix with original to 50%. For auto contrast we set the value to 25%. After that I set a destroy overlay and set the blending mode to lighten. The animation is ready, well done Arties, thanks for the positive feedback, this month there will be 4 tutorials per week as a thank you. To make sure you don't miss a new tutorial from me, please subscribe to the channel. I try to upload 1-2 to two tutorials per week. See you in the next tutorial.